22. Your service like it ought to be. Fair, fast, and friendly. Call Cornerstone Pros. Hi, I'm Dave Strom here on Saturday morning on Faith Talk Tampa. And coming up in one hour, be sure and keep it right here for Choose Life Radio with your host, Jill Taylor, and a ministry program focusing on the sanctity of human life from a biblical worldview. Listen as she speaks with lots of guests who are known for their strong commitment to life. It happens at 9 o'clock right here on Faith Talk Tampa. Portions of this hour have been pre-recorded for broadcast at this time. With SRN News, I'm Bob Agnew in Washington. Retired Pope Benedict XVI died this morning at age 95. Here's the BBC's Bethany Bell. The Vatican in a statement said former Pope Benedict passed away at 9.34 in the morning at the Mata Ecclesiae Monastery in the Vatican. Catholics here in Rome and around the world have been praying for Benedict after Pope Francis said his health had deteriorated earlier this week. The Vatican says Pope Francis will preside over the funeral for his predecessor on Thursday in St. Peter's Square. Former President Trump is condemning the release of his income taxes by House Democrats. Ardent Trump supporters will see this as he does, as an attack on him, as a politicization of the tax process. Of- that is corresponded by Sasek reporting a suspect in the deaths of four Idaho college students is arrested in Pennsylvania. Law enforcement officials say authorities in Pennsylvania arrested 28-year-old Brian Christopher Koberger. This is SRN News. WTBN Pinellas Park, WTWD Plant City, WLCC Brandon. Faith Talk Tampa. Online at Let's Talk Faith.com. Or listen on TuneIn and Odyssey. Christians are being persecuted in Colombia. Michael Harrington explains. It's not the government, it's indigenous people. Members of tribal groups in Colombia who convert to Christianity are being abused by members of their community, which largely follow pagan beliefs and a form of voodoo. Christians in those tribes are often barred from working or receiving an education. Young people usually flee to other parts of Colombia if they can. Some of the tribes also work with drug gangs and try to recruit youngsters. Michael Harrington, SRN News. The Minnesota legislature will feature more LGBT people than at any time in the state's history, and they have an ambitious agenda for 2023, establishing so-called transgender rights banning conversion therapy, promoting abortion, and legalizing marijuana are among the goals shared by the 12 LGBT members, all of them Democrats. The GOP has blocked most of those efforts in past years, but the party no longer has the majority. This is SRN New. CEO Elon Musk says he won't sell any more of his shares in Tesla for at least 18 months. It's an apparent attempt to comfort shareholders of the electric vehicle company, We've watched the stock lose nearly half of its value since Musk's purchase of Twitter went through in October. Musk dumped another $2.58 billion worth of Tesla stock recently. He's also sold nearly $23 billion worth of his car company share since April when he started building a position in Twitter. That's correspondent Jeremy House reporting. The U.S. Capitol will reopen next week to visitors for the first time since the COVID pandemic restricted access Three years ago, access to the Capitol office buildings on the House side is back with visitors there no longer needing to be escorted by a staff member when they pay a visit. Staff-led tours will resume January 7th to limited areas of the Capitol, including the Crypt, the Rotunda, and Statuary Hall. More details at srnnews.com. The following program is sponsored by the Law Offices of Patrick L. Smith. This is the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Get ready with your legal questions and call Patrick now, 877-943-9673. Again, that's 877-943-9673. The law office is open. And now your host, Patrick Smith. Oh, hi there, Attorney Patrick Smith Show Nation. This is the Attorney Patrick Smith Show, and I'm your host, Attorney Patrick Smith, and this is our New Year's Eve edition. Happy New Year's Eve, everyone. 877-943-9673 to be part of today's program. Give us a call now. We're live and local. Open phone lines for all things legal. You can call in now with your legal questions. 877-943-9673. So lots of legal issues popping up over the holidays. At least according to my email, that's the case anyway. So if you have a legal question today, your one-stop shop to get some help this Saturday morning, 877-943-9673. 
We have open phone lines, studio lines. We'll get you right on the air with your question, 877-943-9673. You can also email me directly, patrick at attorneypatricksmith.com. Patrick at attorneypatricksmith.com. But we'd rather talk to you on the air. So that number again, 877-943-9673. And since this is our New Year's Eve edition of the Attorney Patrick Smith Show, we want to invite you also to call in with your New Year's resolutions. And you can share that with your listening audience and uh, we can help you be held accountable to your New Year's resolutions as we go in to 2023. And I checked with the entire team here today about what their New Year's resolutions were. And everyone had something It was sort of health related for everyone. There was really nothing uh, atypical, but maybe you have a unique New Year's resolution you want to share with the listening audience. 877-943-9673. Brian, the call screener who you'll be talking to when you call in with your questions or New Year's resolutions. His particularly was to lose weight. And uh, maybe you can call in and encourage Brian uh, in his weight loss journey. So 877-943-9673. And one of my New Year's resolutions uh, will certainly be not being so delinquent on reading email questions during the show, getting called to task for that. So let's start off. Uh, with some email questions that we have received. And the first one uh, that I thought was particularly worthy of discussion was, I'm getting married next year, and should I get a prenuptial agreement? And it's a fantastic question. And it always depends on sort of the structure of the finances within the family. And I tell people all the time when we're having this conversation, when you pass, do you intend to leave everything to your spouse if they survive you? And they say usually Yes. And in that case, the idea of a nuptial agreement sort of is moot for an estate planning purpose. Now, of course, you know, nuptial agreements at their origin were the sort of pre-divorce contest rules. But they've really been on this track for the last four decades where they've sort of been merging with estate planning documents, addressing issues like spousal elective shares and homestead rights. So from an estate planning perspective, we're really dealing with a situation where If you're leaving everything to your spouse, it's a moot point. But what we're seeing more and more are these second and third marriages where, you know, a spouse of 50 or 60 years has gone on their way to eternity and you find love another time around and they want to protect the children from marriage number one. So now not everything's going to that surviving spouse. Well, there, a nuptial agreement would certainly be a good idea to sit down with your attorney and talk about how to protect all the children and the surviving spouse there uh, from any particular legal contest. I think in those situations, the more you memorialize in writing and while you're here, the better protected everyone will be when you're not. Because the presumption when everyone's having this conversation is you're here. Well, this is a world where you're no longer here to speak up for what you want. So you need to put it in writing now so that everyone knows what you intended. And that can avoid a lot of ambiguity. And what I've discovered is ambiguity often leads to litigation. So 877-943-9673, 877-943-9673. So honoring my New Year's resolution to keep up more with the email questions. We're kicking off the show with an email question. But now let's go to Ruskin and let's talk to Brett. Brett, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. How are you today, Brett? Hi, thank you. Fine. And a happy new year to you and everybody. Um, I'll keep this as brief as possible. Um, I may have to go to small claims court. Uh, I had work done by a contractor, a plumber to be specific. Uh, there were problems shortly after that. I asked them to return. They couldn't fit me in, so to speak. Um, it had no emergency services. They did only had two people that worked there, uh, a big company, uh, or supposedly a big company. I had to hire someone else. They came in and found just everything wrong uh, with plumbing. Piping has to be a certain uh, pitch and whatnot. They found it wrong. It was backing up everywhere. And pipes they found taped with AC tape, duct tape. Anyway, that brings me to this. I, I sent a demand letter two weeks ago for the return of my money, or I intended to sue in small claims because it's, it's less than $1,000. They, in turn, asked me for all the documentation from the second company. My question to you is, do I need to do that like a regular huge case, or should I just keep it and, and, and present it at the hearing if it goes that far? 
Well, if they're asking for the documentation, I think that what they're examining is sort of what remedial efforts were taken so that they can sort of size it up to make sure that they were necessary and that there's not sort of someone taking advantage of you a, a second time in this way and doing things that didn't really need to be done. And I think that's mm -hmm. sort of where they're coming from is making sure that the additional repairs were actually required. So I don't think it's unreasonable. And I certainly think it's something that's uh, probably accessible in discovery if it ever did get that far. So I don't see any reason why you wouldn't want to proffer that paperwork to them so that you could hopefully reach some sort of amicable resolution. I hope that no, I was hoping for that also. But OK, do you, that was my question. Brett, Brett do you have a, do you have an attorney that you're working with on this? No, I, I did call, um, but you know what? It was delicately told to me that, you know, it's such a small case. It would probably cost me more than, you know, if, if I settled or even if I got the full seven or $800 back, uh, it would cost me more to do it. And that's so a fair point. But I, if your service agreement with the original company had an attorney's fees provision, that's a great thing to have in there to protect you from those situations. And that's where the economics of litigation doesn't really have as big of a bite. So if you have a thousand dollar dispute and it's going to cost you 3,500 in attorney's fees, obviously you're not going to pursue it. Now, if your service agreement says, oh, by the way, if there's a dispute that breaks out and the party that prevails is entitled to recover all their attorney's fees in addition to what they were awarded, now it makes a lot more sense to engage counsel. So do you have a copy of the service agreement? I actually would have to go back and take a look. I was unaware of that. Go back, take a look, oh, and I, maybe have your attorney you met with the first time take another look at that. And if you're not working with that attorney, we'd be happy to take a look at it with you. But at the end of the day, I think you need to know that answer before you go down this road, because your power position as far as negotiating settlement is going to be increased mm -hmm. by probably a factor of 10 if you've got a good attorney's fees clause in there. Okay, so it's a attorney fee clause. Okay, I will do that. And I have a pen in hand if I could get your contact information. Sure. My direct office line, 877-754-6764, 877-754-6764. And the office will reopen on Tuesday. We're closed Monday in observance of the uh, New Year's holiday. Okay. Well, right. thank you very much. I appreciate it. Brett, any New Year's resolutions you want to share with the listeners? Uh, well, my wife told me I got to be better. That's, that's you've got to be better, better <laughs> just, just sort of in general, like across the board. Yeah. Stop complaining so much. She says, so. well, you know, and here's one thing I found that helps with that. If you actively focus on, uh, saying things you're thankful for, it does really help shift your paradigm so that you complain a lot less. At least that worked for me, Brett. Okay. Good. Advice. All right, Brett, have a great day. Thank you. you All righty. This is the attorney, Patrick Smith show, 877-943-9673. That's your number to be part of our program today. We're live and local open phone lines. We'll get you right on the air. 877-943-9673. Or you can email me, Patrick at attorneypatricksmith.com. And that number for the office, by the way, that's good for any of the office locations, Clearwater, Sarasota, Sun City Center, our Claremont location up in the villages as well. Any of those locations, you can reach the office uh, starting on Tuesday, 877-754-6764. And I'll give out the office number later in the show as well, but we want to talk to you now during the show, 877-943-9673. And we are also checking your email questions today as well and being hyper diligent to answer them. So you can email your questions to Patrick at attorneypatricksmith.com. And before we go to Leah and Tampa, let me take another uh, email question. All right. So I'm considering adding my children's names to my bank account in home. Is this a good idea? It can be. But I think it's one of those situations where you question whether or not it's going to be optimal. And the concerns that I have with adding children's names to assets is, number one, giving kids too much power now, because if you have some sort of dispute with them, their name is on there and they have control over the asset. Uh, my additional concerns are liability exposures. If the children are involved in some sort of incident that produces liability, like an auto accident, or maybe a divorce or some sort of bankruptcy. Now your assets are potentially exposed. If the home that their name is being added to is Homestead, and we've done an entire show on Florida Homestead law, if the home is protected and you add a child to it and they already have their own homestead, uh, they can't have two. So there may be a partial 
loss of homestead exemption there as well. Plus, there's also the gift tax implications. There's the present interest annual exclusion you can give away, but if you go beyond that, which is currently 16,000 per person per year, you can be exposed to some gift taxes. So I think that overall, not a great idea adding kids' names. I think there are far more efficient strategies such as trust that'll allow you to optimize that plan and accomplish the same thing. So 877-943-9673 to be part of the show today. We'd love to talk to you. All right, let's go to a very patient Leah in Tampa. Leah, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Hey, Leah, you there? Did we lose Leah? All right, we'll try Leah back here in a second. So 877-943-9673, 877-943-9673. And if we lost Leah, uh, we will, Leah, call back and we'll try to get our best to get you on the air. 877-943-9673. In the meantime, let's go to Sarasota and let's talk to Kevin. Kevin, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Yes, sir. How are you? I'm great, Kevin. Happy New Year to you. Yeah, thank you. Yourself? Uh, doing great. How can I help? Um, I just wanted to um, ask a question about a divorce issue. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I, I'm going through a divorce. Reluctantly, I'm going through a divorce because I absolutely love my, my wife. Um, but um, the situation is, is that I'm down in the States, and um, she's up in Canada. And uh, I just I just wanted to ask a question about, um, I, I guess the word would be litigation, like how, how I can um, sort it out the best way. So do you currently have counsel representing you, Kevin? No, I don't. All right. So just... She, she, she does, but I don't. Okay. Well, number one, I recommend getting an attorney. And I don't think that this is a, a wise thing to go through on your own. So you did the right thing by reaching out. And if you want to give me a call at the office on Tuesday, I'll put you in touch with some family law attorneys and who can help you down there in Sarasota County. Okay. But uh, I'm sorry you're having to go through that, Kevin. That's, uh, that's an unfortunate situation. I know. Situation. It, it's real tough. It's real tough because I've got two girls. I mean, they're 25 and 17, but it's um, it's taken its toll on me big time because, um, like I said to you earlier, um, I mean, I really love my wife and um, I um, care for her deeply. And it's not like it was a promiscuous thing, like I was with somebody or she was with somebody. It's nothing like that. It's just um, the distance and she decided to proceed with it. And uh, I, I didn't even know that she was going to go ahead and proceed with it. She just went ahead and did it. And, uh, um, you know, it caught me off guard and stuff like that. So now now I'm trying to sort it out and stuff like that. Um, she, to make the long story short, her parents both died like within two, two years of each other. And she was the executor of the estate. And uh, that was time consuming for and stuff like that. And I'm going to be 53 in a couple of weeks. But, um, you know, it's just, anyway, that's the situation. Well, and I just, Kevin, we'll say was, a prayer for all you guys involved. You said you have two daughters. They are, you said 25 and 17? Yes, 25 and 19. 25 and 19. How are they doing? Um, they're good. I talk to my oldest daughter all the time. Uh, my 19 year old, I, um, go ahead and, uh, um, try to get in contact with her. Um, I talk to her or text her every once in a while. And well, I, I, every day, um, because I, I'm real tight with my family. I always was, I always was. And, um, you know, I was born and raised with a good Christian background. And uh, it's just this is this is just blowing me offside. So I wouldn't um, let go of that Christian background now, Kevin. I would lean into that, and I would definitely recommend that you know whether it's a pastor at the church or a professional sort of mental health counselor, you get involved and engaged with someone because whether or not you can see it now, what you're going through is a real trauma, and also it's going to set up the point for you to take lead for your daughters and encourage them to 
seek that sort of counseling as well, because this is going to be a traumatic event for them. And it's shocking to me how many times you can tell children, even adult children, you know, the divorce has nothing to do with them, but the children often find ways to blame themselves for this and encouraging them now sooner as opposed to later, especially if you take the lead and they see dad going to get counseling, that sort of takes away the stigma for them and encourages them to get engaged and start processing through this and ultimately helping everyone move on from this, presuming the marriage isn't salvageable. Yeah, well, I'm going to go ahead and take your advice for sure. Um, however, I do have to tell you, they know that, um, you know, I'm a steady person. I work all the time. Um, you know, I'm working hard and stuff like that. And I still, um, you know, serve provisions for them and stuff like that. I mean, these girls, like my girls, are, like, incredibly awesome. They don't do drugs. They don't drink. They don't... Uh, do anything like that um they're they're like just stand-up people and even even my wife like she barely drinks um she, it's just it, it's it's just a matter of circumstances right because we're 22 hours apart by car and uh you know it's just it it, it sucks right now like it's just you know and uh it was, it was brought on. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that she was so tight with her mom and dad that when her dad died, um, we, we were caregivers for him. We lived at house with him because he needed somebody to help him out, stuff like that. And then uh, he died. And, um, you know, it was like, well, they got to sell the house. She's got a brother and sister and stuff like that. So, Kevin, do you yeah. think it's at all possible that your wife's trauma of losing two parents so quickly is possibly the reason or the impetus behind the divorce? Yes, sir. For sure. So all the more reason, and I don't know if your wife is seeing a counselor, but I think if you take the lead on that, and I don't know that your marriage is salvageable. I mean, I certainly hope it is. But at the end of the day, I think it's a situation where if she sees you taking the lead, getting some counseling and decides to take counseling herself, maybe she processes the trauma of the grief of losing two parents so quickly. And maybe that brings some clarity where, you know, she's able to salvage uh, her relationship with you. But either way, it sounds like there's a lot of trauma floating around out there. And we'll definitely say a prayer for you and your wife and your two daughters and wish you guys nothing but the best in 2023. Do you guys, um, and you guys, have, Kevin, do you have any New Year's resolutions? I know you got a lot on your plate, but any positive goals you've set for 2023? Um, I don't really, I mean, I've never been, really been a person to make a resolution because it failed. It's not good. Um, but I would say if I had one resolution, it would be that I could keep it together. Wow. Kevin, we're all standing. We're all standing behind you here. Okay, so know that you got a, a an entire you know listenership out there supporting you emotionally, holding you up, and uh, don't be afraid. Like I said, to reach out to your pastor or someone, a counselor to to lean on and help you through these days. And you're going to make it through this. And you just got to you know see that vision in your head. You on the other side of this, however it looks, and and you will get there but you're going to head towards what your mind's focusing on. So focus on those good thoughts. Okay. Right. All right. Okay. Kevin, thanks for the call. Right. And I'll give out that office number here in a moment and you have a pen and paper handy and give me a call next week. Okay. I appreciate that. All right. God bless you, Kevin. You too. All right. Eight, seven, seven, nine, four, three, nine, six, seven, three. That's an be part of today's show. Eight, seven, seven, nine, four, three, nine six seven three give us a call or email me patrick at attorneypatricksmith.com patrick at attorneypatricksmith.com and i promise kevin and boy that's a tough call but that's the real world folks uh sometimes this world we live in is a very hard place uh and there's very hard topics and i see that on a daily basis so uh it's important to remember when you have an interaction with someone you have no idea what cross they're bearing and, uh, you know, you could be, have a cross as heavy as Kevin's. Maybe it's something heavier. So I think it just is a good encouragement to be kinder to everyone we encounter throughout the day.
Uh, the number to reach us at the office, 877-754-6764. Again, that office number to schedule any of your appointments at any of our office locations, 877-754-6764. By the way, that's also the number to schedule us for speaking engagements throughout the state as well. I've got several of those coming up that we'll be announcing as we get a little closer. So to talk to us today, 877-943-9673. Open studio lines. We'll get you right on the air. Now I see Leah. Is Leah back? Leah's back. Leah in Tampa. Welcome to the attorney Patrick Smith show. Oh, good morning. Hey, I'm Leah. Eight, hi, I'm 88 years old. <clears throat> I have no real assets except my house that is about only 40 or $50,000. And I just want to know the cheapest, easiest way to keep it out of probate. Don't pass away. Pardon? Don't die. Don't, I won't. <laughs> if, you, if you don't die, that's the easiest way to keep the home out of probate. Right. I plan on not dying. <laughs> Good. Yeah, there's multiple options out there, uh, Leah, as far as planning for when you've passed. I mean, it's eventual. We're all going to pass away. So it's wise of you to think about it. And I think that, you know, it's a matter of having a consultation. We offer a free consultation. And I'll, like I said, I just gave out the office line. I'd be happy to sit down with you, Leah, in the office or... We can do a conference call with you if you prefer, kind of walk through the more, you know, financially intimate details about your estate and yeah, kind of uh, your goals. Uh, I, I don't have, <clears throat> I really have no estate. I don't have any uh, savings or anything like that. Okay. Well, I mean, you could do something as simple as a will, but a will is going to go through a process known as probate. So if your goal is to avoid probate altogether, usually okay, it requires yes. some sort of trust, maybe a simple trust. There are also some other options out there as well. But at the end of the day, the short version is I would recommend a consultation where you come in, we go through everything, and I'll give you an official recommendation and quote you the fee for our services ahead of time when we still offer our flat fees for estate planning. So, I mean, our wills are $75, our trust package is $695, and I've, I've never raised either of those rates uh, the entire 16 years I've been in practice, Leah, and I don't plan to anytime soon. Okay, that sounds, that sounds good. My son would help me, because I don't go anywhere, actually. My son would help me do this, and uh, so just tell me, what would the total, about the total price of the whole thing, like you say, be? Well, best guess at this point would be somewhere between seventy five to six ninety five. But that's a guess, Leah. I need to know a little more about your estate and the family and your goals, but that's what the complimentary consultation is for. So I can size all that up, put a written fee agreement together and give it to you, and then you can make your decision. Okay, but still what would I'm sorry, I'm missing the the cheapest part that it would be. And then you know So the fee for a simple will is seventy five dollars. Right. Okay. All right. And then, all, all right. And then, and then, then it could go up to how high? Well, I think based on the, the description you've given me, the sort of bookends of your possible fees would be somewhere between $75 and maybe as high as 695 But again, after the consultation, I can give you a more specific quote for the services and outline the exact services we would recommend performing. Right. No, I understand. And so the most it could be, but it wouldn't probably be, would be 695 but it wouldn't be. That's what I hear based on this call, Leah. And that's yeah, what Yeah, okay. That, that's that's to... just what... No, that, that's very good. No, that's good. And I will, you know, take care of that. And uh, no, that's good. I just needed to know that. Leah, you said you're 88? 88, yes. So at 88, do you have any New Year's resolutions you want to share? Do I have what? Any New Year's resolutions you would like oh, to share? Oh, um, well, no. I never make New Year's resolutions. because I mean, I just, because so much is, uh, I just try to do all the better, better things all the time, not just on New Year's. Well, I think that's a wonderful spirit. So not to focus on it just on New Year's, but to sort of resolve to be better. Exactly. All the way around, all year round. I like that. Yeah, exactly. Well, Leah, you're a delight to talk to. We look forward to working with you, and you have a happy new year, my dear. You too. Thank mm. you very, very much. You're most welcome. Happy new year. Thank right. you Bye -bye. very much. All righty, 
888-789-9673. Give us a call now. We're live and local. Happy to help any way we can. And email your questions to Patrick at Attorney Patrick Smith. Dot com Patrick at attorneypatricksmith.com. And before I go to St. Pete and take Jeff's call, I'm going to take another email question. And here we go. So if I should be stopped by a police officer under suspicion of DUI, is it recommended I blow or not? All right, let's see. So uh, this question, we get it all the time, uh, and especially uh Attorney Matt Kendall, the criminal defense attorney who's been on the show a few times now, whether or not you submit to the breathalyzer in the state of Florida, uh, you actually have implied consent to a breathalyzer by having a driver's license. Now, you don't actually have to, but if you don't, uh, your license can be suspended automatically for a year if it's your first DUI. If it's your second or your third, that can be up to 18 months. So not... Uh, submitting to it is is kind of got some natural consequences so it's up to you to make that decision in that moment now the other thing a lot of people don't know is the field sobriety test you don't have to consent to that uh and a lot of times the officers won't necessarily tell you that you have the option of refusing the field sobriety test but the other thing is too so if you do take the breathalyzer and it happens to come out you know the legal limit in florida 0.08 let's say you come out and you happen to blow 0.07. So you're under the legal limit. Well, then you're not over the legal limit, but you can still be arrested for DUI. And now the critical number for being presumptively not intoxicated is sort of 0.05. But even if you're under 0.05, if the officer has suspicion that you're somehow impaired, then they can still arrest you for driving under the influence. So the safest thing to do is just don't drive if you've been drinking at all, or just don't drink. And then you don't have to worry about that problem. 877-943-9673. 877-943-9673. This is the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. I'm your host, Attorney Patrick Smith, local Central Florida attorney. Next, let's go to St. Pete and let's talk to Jeff. Jeff, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Yes, good morning. How are you? I'm great, Jeff. How can we help? Uh, just some questions. We uh, have a neighbor that bought a house beside us and that was going to be his residential. All of a sudden, it's become an Airbnb. And uh, we've been here 29 years, a quiet neighborhood. Uh, we're on the water on the St. Pete side. Uh, my understanding with rentals, you had to rent it for 30 days or Airbnb was a week. Uh, this guy rents it three days, two days. Um, and, and, you know, all of a sudden I'm living by a hotel, so I'm just curious which direction I do. Uh, we call it St. Pete and of course there's, there's no help at all. Well, what is the local St. Pete city ordinance? And if you're, you know, a member of the St. Pete city government and you know, this fact, you're welcome to call on the show and we'll put you right on the air so you can give Jeff the direct answer, but Jeff, there's going to be a regulation there. And this sort of dovetails or piggybacks with our discussion we've been having on the short-term rental debate in Indian Rocks Beach. And your perfect example of this, you know, short-term rental saga is not just in Indian Rocks. It's not just in Florida. It's even across the nation. So it, at the end of the day, it's going to come down to local ordinance. And the big debate is, are these ordinances, were they in effect? And I think the critical date was July 1st of 2011, and they had to be in effect by then. Otherwise, you couldn't enforce a ban on short-term rentals. So it's going to come down to what the local regulation is there in St. Pete. Now, is it the fact that you just have new neighbors every three or four days that's the problem? Or is there particular behaviors that are being exhibited that are the problem? Or is it both? It's both. Okay. It's both. So a lot of partying yeah. and bachelor parties, that kind of thing going on? Oh, yes. Do you have yes. any young children? Uh, no. Uh, all our kids are grown. Well, there's a blessing there, at least. At least, you know, I mean, that's, I know I've had callers call in and say, you know, the concern is I have little children and I don't want these, you know, raucous parties going on right next door to where my, you know, six and seven year old are playing. So at mm-hmm. least you don't have that issue. But I think the starting point, reach out to your city government and say, hey, look, this is going on. First of all, is this legal? And the city will tell you if it's illegal what they're doing, they'll probably get fined or cited and have to deal with the consequence of that. And 
those fines can pile up. But I think that's the starting point is, are they violating local city ordinance? Mm -hmm. And what was that date? Again, I believe, I believe it was July 1st of 2011. The regulation had to be in effect by then, but there's also been some changes recently, uh, according to our attorney general, basically saying you can, if, if your changes after that date were essentially tweaking things and not, you know, uh, a major overhaul or ban, uh, then we'll allow the modifications. But so it's up in the air, the short point now, Jeff, and it's always subject to the legislature. So if the state of Florida passes any legislation, then that obviously could uh, change the, the the face of the the state with regard to short term rentals. But no legislation has been you know put on the governor's desk to date. And I, yeah, I believe the date was July 1st of 2011. That could be wrong. And but there was a date. The regulation had to be in effect before this date. And your city government will certainly know uh, what that date was and whether or not short-term rentals are banned there if they're heavily regulated like they are in indian rocks beach but not entirely banned and sort of whether or not this particular neighbor is violating those regulations you're right maybe short-term rentals are allowed there jeff but maybe it has to be a seven-day rental and he's doing three or four days that's obviously a violation of the local ordinance so it's really going to come down to the the nitty-gritty it's going to be in that detail Okay, I appreciate it. Thank right. you, Jeff. Any New Year's resolutions you want to share? Uh, no, just to be uh, safe and healthy. All right. Not. You know, I thought you were going to say something like hoping for a new neighbor. Uh, no, that's not going to happen. <laughs> uh, this, this guy's making a nice living off of this. Well, this you're, house, you so. do get new neighbors. You get them every three or four days. So I, I, I do, but. When I look out my back window at my dock, I don't like to see people. I, I don't never know. I don't yeah. know very well. Yeah, so. that's a little disconcerting. Well, Jeff, uh, call back and let me know what the city of St. Pete says as far as their regulations so we can kind of compare them and contrast them to what we've heard in Indian Rocks Beach. Okay, I will do. All righty, Jeff. We'll look forward to hearing from you. Have a happy new year. You too. Take All care. Right. Bye. Yes, sir. 877-943-9673. This is Attorney Patrick Smith, and this is the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Jeff opens up the line, so if you've been trying to get in, feel free to give us a call now. 877-943-9673. You can give us a call or email your question, patrick at attorneypatricksmith.com. Again, those email questions, direct them to patrick at attorneypatricksmith.com, or just give us a call, 877 943 nine six seven three all right let's go to tarpon springs let's talk to marie marie welcome to the attorney patrick smith show yes thank you for getting back to me i got a problem with um i applied for immigration i apply i'm sorry <laughs> i applied for a green card for my son which i live i'm american citizen forever I live in Tavon Springs, and um, my son is in Barbados. So when I applied, it comes through, everything went through, every piece of information I send in for them, everything. When it's about four years going on to get the reply from them, they said that um, they couldn't um, give it to me uh, for me to go for my son. So I say the reason why they um they tell me is um they don't know where my name my first name comes my first name come from to my first husband which those children are grown men and women and and from after that long long years I'm 80 years old and I married as a Christian in the church long years my husband died my first husband died all my children alive and I married again um in the church my husband died again but every piece of information they asked me i sent in but one had a problem i wasn't married um in barbados i was married in my first marriage was in south america with my first husband so they want to know where my surname come from to one to one i sent everything but this one when they send an accent to me, I I applied back South America, but the immigration gave me 30 days 
to get back this um, marriage certificate. We have nothing to do with my son, nothing at all. Well, Marie, I so, think what you need to do is hire an immigration attorney. I mean, I think that if you're trying to do this on your own, do you currently have counsel representing you on this matter? Ah, uh, yes, I got one of my sister justice of peace, but I want to know for myself if I have to go to attorney or whatever. All right, hold on. Let's back up a second. You said you have counsel, and it's one of your sisters who's your attorney. Yeah, yes. So, um. I wanted to know for myself because I don't know to get into all those kind of things. Okay, so you want a second opinion from a different immigration yes. attorney. Okay, just yes. call call me at the office next week and I'll put you in touch with another immigration attorney who'll talk to you and get you a second opinion, sort of blind, not knowing what your sister's opinion of it is. And then you can compare notes and see uh, if they agree or if they disagree and maybe what any discrepancies are. Okay, thank you very much. All righty, Marie. Any New Thank Year's you. resolutions you want to share with the listeners? Oh, yes. I suppose to go to Micronesia. To, I'm a, a, a Christian. I wanted, I know the church is not down there. And I heard all them little children are going out without knowing who Jesus is, what the life they're supposed to have, instead of going through all those kind of tribulations right down there. So I wanted to go down, but the ticket was so high. So I pray that God will work it out this new year so we can go out down and seek and save the lost. Those who doesn't know Jesus, those who doesn't have a relationship with God. When everything God wants to is our relationship with God. Everything is... <laughs> Mar Marie, are you, are you a missionary, Marie? Um, I'm, <laughs> I was baptized in the Anchor Point Bay Church of Christ. Um... Um, 56 years ago, still going, still studying with people, still reading the Bible with people, still, uh, evangelizing, going. We got, um, the church is here, the church is in Tampa. So I we just want to, I just want to go over the background a little bit, Marie, because you're sort of flirting with being probably one of the most interesting callers I've had in the history of the show. Born in Barbados, married in South America. No, 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 no. Um, nationality. I was born, I'm a St. Lucian born. Even better. So born but, in St. Lucia, married in South America, and now your goal, your New Year's resolution for 2023 is to go and spread the gospel in Micronesia. Oh, yeah. First time over there. Wherever I go, I spread because my daughter-in-law is from there. Her mom is from there. As a matter of fact, I just we just sent her down to Micronesia from Stop on Springs day before yesterday. At, you said you're 80 so, years old, too, correct? Yeah, yeah, All right, yeah. So for the rest of you listeners out there, I don't know what your New Year's resolutions were, but you're going to have to level them up by like a factor of 10 because Marie at 80 is making her New Year's resolution to go on a mission trip to Micronesia. Marie, I applaud yeah. you. God bless you. Thank I think you. you are wonderful, and I hope... I'm half as ambitious as you are yeah. when I reach 80 years old. That is terrific. You sound like a delight. Give me a call at the office. We'll get you squared away on the immigration issue so that you can have a clear mind and uh, peace of mind about yeah. your son and his citizenship when you go and spread the gospel in Micronesia. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. God bless you, Marie. Thank you. All right. You too. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Marie. 877-943-9673. That's your live and local number to be part of today's show. 877-943-9673. So you can give us a call now. We have open studio lines. We'll get you and your call right on the air. 877-943-9673. Or email me, Patrick, at attorneypatricksmith.com patrick at attorneypatricksmith.com so you can email your questions or you can give us a call now 877-943-9673 so the polk county sheriff's office i want to take a couple moments to recognize a very significant retirement that occurred this past week uh, a very special treasure to the polk county sheriff's office miss betty or betty t as she was known to so many, uh, has retired after 60 years of service to the Polk County Sheriff's Office. That's right, six zero 
years. She's been there longer than, than Sheriff Judd has been there. Sheriff Gray Judd, one of our favorite sheriffs. And uh, just to give you an idea, put things in perspective, according to the, the posting from the Polk County Sheriff's Office, membership numbers are how they you know track uh, members of the Polk County Sheriff's Office. Well, currently, if you join and happen to be lucky enough to be dubbed a Polk County Sheriff, the numbers, the membership numbers are in the 9,700 range. Miss Betty's number is 13. Yeah, that's how long she's been there. So Miss Betty, if you're listening, thank you for your years of service to my home county. You will be missed by all accounts. You are a treasure and a delight and were a huge asset to the Polk County Sheriff's Office. So God bless you and your retirement as you begin 2023, Miss Betty. If you want to be part of the show, 877-943-9673. Call us now with your legal question, 877-943-9673, or give me an email and we'll read your email question live on the air. Patrick at attorneypatricksmith.com. All right, let's go to Sarasota. Let's talk to Ed. Ed, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Oh, thank you. Uh, we have some property in Pennsylvania, uh, this raw land, but it's got oil and gas underneath it. Uh, and we wanted to pass it on to our to three children, basically, uh, and retain rights while they're still alive to a portion of the uh, mineral rights. What's the best way to do this? Ed, do you currently have your residency established in the state of Florida or the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania? No, we're, we're Florida residents. Right. We live here full time. Do you currently have any estate planning documents in place? We do. All right. Yeah, it, yeah. It, 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 the land is part of uh, my wife's trust, actually. Perfect. Uh, living trust. So I think if the property's already in the trust, I think that you're all set. Uh, you just want to make sure to have that trust reviewed by your counsel. So how long has it been since you met with your estate planning attorney? Uh, it's been about five or six years. Yeah. But we wanted to transfer property now before we pass. Why would you want to do that? Well, let's <laughs> Uh, I guess just to have the kids have it. So the one thing I would recommend you do before you do that, check with your accountant and your attorney about the cost basis analysis. Sometimes when you transfer property now, uh, number one, it can be treated as a taxable gift if the value of the property is beyond the present interest annual exclusion. So and then all no, it's the, not. Okay. And then number two is the concern about cost basis. So if you paid a hundred dollars for it and you pass away and it's worth a thousand dollars. Uh, there's a capital gains there, obviously, but if the property is left through the trust to the children, then they obviously get some sort of step up typically. So you're going to want to run that analysis with your your CPA, tax professional, and attorney so that you know the tax consequences before you do this and make that maneuver. But it's an achievable goal. I think you'll just need a, a Pennsylvania attorney to draft the appropriate paperwork presuming you've done the tax analysis and your attorney down here and your accountant down here, bless it. It's an achievable goal. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the property is not the, the value of the property. Well, the assessed value is somewhere around four thousand dollars. It's not like I say, it's raw land. Yeah. So you're not going to be terribly worried if there is a capital gains tax, uh, because at the end of the day, the property now is a fairly low value, and it's certainly oh. not anywhere near the present interest annual exclusion for gift taxes. But nevertheless, it's been five years. You're due for a review. Call your attorney. Go see your attorney. Review the entire file. And that's how you keep everything optimized. Like I said, you know, the number one mistake I see in estate planning is people don't do it. But a close second is people fail to update the plans they have. And your optimization of your estate plan is only as good as how often you update it and keep it optimal. Things change, you know, laws change, family situations, finances change. And unless you're revisiting it, and my general rule is every three years, unless something dramatic changes in the law, the family or the finances, then you obviously go and see your attorney sooner. If it's been five years, Ed, give your attorney a call, go sit down with them, review everything, and just make sure everything's the way you want it. All right. Very good. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Ed. Any New Year's resolutions you want to share with everybody? No, I never make those kind of things. I just try to be good year round, try to be healthy. There you go. Well, Ed, have a happy New Year. 
And you too have a healthy one to you. Thank you, sir. Bye. 877-943-9673. This is the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. I'm your host, Attorney Patrick Smith. And let me give out the office one more time before we go to Mark and Venice. The office number, if you want to reach out to schedule us to come out and speak to your club, group, or organization, or to schedule your complimentary consultation at any of our office locations down in Clearwater, Sarasota, Sun City Center, 877-754-6764. 877 877- Seven five four six seven six four, and you can reach us now live in the studio eight seven seven nine four three nine six seven three eight seven seven nine four three nine six seven three or email me patrick at attorney patrick smith dot com. All right, let's go to Venice. Let's talk to Mark. Mark, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Mark, I've got about two minutes here. Okay, uh, my ex girlfriend and I own a house together, and recently I got something forcing me to sell the house. And it comes to find out that she changed the homestead from 100-100 to 50-50. Can she do that? You well, know what I mean? Well, if you're not a married couple, you you owned it 50-50. So the 100-100 thing um, is something called tenants by the entireties. All five unities are present. Time, title, interest, possession, and marriage. Your situation is missing the last one. So you each own an undivided one half interest. Now, as far as what your uh, wife changed with the county, I'd have to see what paperwork you're talking about. And it sounds like what she served you with is a partition action. And you, when were you served with that? Uh, a couple of weeks ago. All right. There's usually a 20 day uh, limit. So you need to get with an attorney ASAP. And you can give me a call at the office on Tuesday. I'll put you in touch with a very good attorney who can help you with that, Mark. And they'll be happy to get you uh, squared away and get an answer filed in response to that. Okay. Okay, great. All righty, Mark. Good luck to you. Yes, sir. Happy New Year. All righty. 877-943. That's your phone number for next week. 877-943-9673. We will be back live with you next year. Uh, on the Attorney Patrick Smith Show, and it has been another fantastic year. We've enjoyed our time, and thank you, all the listeners out there, uh, the Attorney Patrick Smith Show Nation, who have made the show uh, such a success as it is, uh, that you were the reason why we do it. It is my honor and privilege to come in every Saturday morning, sit in this chair behind this microphone, and talk to you about your legal concerns and uh, the issues affecting your life. So again, thank you for this opportunity. Everyone stay safe. God bless and happy, happy new year. The proceeding was sponsored by the Law Offices of Patrick L. Smith. W-282-CI Tampa, W-271-CY Lakeland, W-262-CP Bayonet Point. Online at letstalkfaith.com. Or listen on TuneIn and Odyssey. When Holly's son was considering suicide, she called a Focus on the Family counselor. All those years I'd been listening to Focus, I was thinking about how... They were like that practical guide for me. That was sound advice I could get from them. 
I didn't really know where else to turn. I'm Jim Daly. Help us rescue hurting parents and give families hope. Donate 